Um, I, 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 I just, I, you know, and Nadine mentioned this, and I think it's really uh, it's something important to keep in mind. I mean, these, um, these are all individual projects, right, but are also very closely connected intellectually. They can be connected, actually, in terms of exchange of materials and exchange of ideas as well. And uh, again, I just had another insight sitting here. Today's a great day for insights for Larry, by the way, which is the, uh, in, in the clinical research world, the clinical trial world that, I, that I've grown up in and we're all involved in to some extent, the, the idea of collaborating and cooperating among ourselves and physicians you know, working on, uh, on, on problems uh, and, and having the freedom to move off in different directions is sort of part of really what our culture is like. It hasn't been the culture of basic science, which is really coming from a totally different route. And I think that one of the things that BCRF has been able to do is really bring together the cultures so that, so that the, the highest quality laboratory science can be married with not only clinical insights and, 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 and uh, thoughts about, um, uh, about disease, but also the style that we've developed actually in clinical medicine over the years of really working together for a common purpose. Um, and so, so they're really all very much connected, finding new clues for the development of, for the development of cancer related to inflammation. I want to give a sentence of my own about that you know, in, in a second. Uh, why you get different kinds of cancers with different amounts of estrogen. Uh, last night I was with people, we were talking about the role of estrogen in breast cancer causation, but some are dependent on breast cancer, so, some, some tumors are dependent on estrogen, some are not. Why? What is the, the background and the genes that, that leads to that? how we can take cancer cells out and study them in the laboratory and really investigate them uh, well. So not just getting a small percentage of, of tumors actually growing in the lab, but, but almost all cancers, so we can really analyze that, and how we can use that to plan uh, appropriate uh, pharmacological therapy very, very, very specifically are all interconnected topics. This thing about inflammation in cancer, which you heard about really elegant work that Cliff is involved in, um, is something we've talked about here in, you know, in, in the past. And over the last few years, um, uh, I've been involved in work that has uh, shown that uh, we know that cancer cells can travel around the body and go to other parts of the body and grow, and that's what really gives cancer its bad name, its ability to grow in places like liver and bone and lung and places where it can cause trouble. But it's been discovered that the cells can actually come back to the tumor itself and can enrich that tumor um, and make the tumor grow. And the thing that mostly attracts the cell back to the tumor are chemicals that are related to the inflammatory process. Uh, IL-6, IL-8 are, are two names, and so the connections really are, are very, very uh, clear between things like inflammation, things like adipose tissue fat, which, which promotes inflammation, uh, and, and the behavior. And, and what really excites me about this is that, that all of the work going on in BCRF can really connect uh, these, uh, these pieces together and we can learn from each other.